Alright guys, how are you doing? And welcome back to GTA Online. Now, I have not said that for a good two months now. Uh, I believe the last car I actually drove and reviewed was the Dubachi Vapid GT. I think it was that. So yeah, it's been a very, very long time since I've been on this game. Even when I've not been recording. So, this car, a lot of you were requesting me to do a review on it. So, I thought I may as well do one. It is the Coil Cyclone now. It's kind of a combination between the Rimac or Remac, however which way you want to pronounce it, Concept 1 and the Koningsegg Agera. Now, the Koningsegg part is obviously very noticeable due to the stripes and also, as you can see around here, the rear end. Now, I always thought that the Remac always kind of looked like a Koenigsegg from the rear. And I'm kind of glad that Rockstar kind of acknowledged that because it is very, very Ajera like. But this is my own custom version. I have added a wing on there. Oh my god! And the rims on this thing, it's one of the super or the high end ones. It looks very, very nice with the sort of chromey look to it. But anyway, I am going to tell you in this video why this thing is so good. So we've already kind of covered the sort of looks department and yeah definitely one of the best looking cars to come into GTA in quite some time. Anywho, let's get going in the coil cyclone. I nearly called it a remake there. That's just how easy it is to do man. Now obviously there is no engine noise or anything. It is an electric car so that's the maybe one downside to this thing but I kind of like it because it is something different but the big thing that everyone has been banging on about and I didn't really believe them until I actually tried it for myself is the acceleration of this car. It is absolutely ballistic. Now we'll stop beside this little Chevy Bolt right here. I'll put the handbrake on, just rev it right up even though you can't hear it. <laughs> and it actually blooming burns out the front tires which is kind of funny. But three, two, one and go. Look how quick that is man! Jesus Christ, man. Now, this is obviously the fully upgraded version. So, you've got the maximum amount of power and the maximum amount of torque in this thing. And it just blows your freaking mind. I mean, compared to, like, the T20 and stuff, for acceleration, it's, it's right up there. It's even better than them cars. Bloody hell, man. And I thought the T20 couldn't be topped because whenever you put the acceleration down on that car, it's, it's freaking bonkers, man. But this... Going for an overtake, the easiest car to do it in, man. Right, so we're here on Jay Leno's road, and we're going to test out the handle in a little bit. Now, the car is all-wheel drive, so it should grip onto the corners very nicely. Bear in mind, this is GTA, but we can tell the difference with some cars. Obviously, rear-wheel drive cars kind of want to kick out a little bit more, but all-wheel drive cars kind of want to grip. So, this... <sighs> I just can't believe how quick it is getting through these corners, man. So good. I mean, I'm kind of comparing this thing, as I said, to the T20 a little bit. I know it's kind of unfair, but it's in that sort of class. It's in that sort of proper high-end supercar class. I mean, what would you guys class this thing as? I mean, like a hypercar or a supercar? Now, GTA doesn't really have, like, a hypercar class, but if there was, I'm pretty sure this thing would be in it, just for the acceleration alone. But coming around the corners, going some fair damn old speed... It's holding on pretty well. There we go, man. Coming around the cars and everything. It's very nimble. Very, very nimble indeed. That's one thing I'm noticing. Just tapping the, tapping the steering just one way or another, and it just goes, man. It's very 458-ish. There's the interior on the move. Very small windscreen, I must give it that. It is a very, very small windscreen. But we've got enough. It's not Camaro levels of small we can see out of it but i really really like the interior for this thing as i said it's kind of wrapped around you with the white it's very very nice indeed but let's talk about the big thing that happened this week now if you've been on social media or youtube at any time you would have seen the two big announcements by tesla now the first one was a semi truck called the semi and oh my god it actually goes 0 to 60 in five seconds for a blooming semi truck, that is absolutely bonkers. But the big one that me and you are interested in is the new Roadster. When this thing came out on the stage, 
no one expected it. Elon Musk just pulled it right out of his sleeve and just shot the freaking world because it can go, as I'm sure you all know, 0 to 60 in 1.9 seconds in a top speed of 250 miles an hour plus. Now, I like the fact that he didn't tell you the exact digits because I'm not sure even he knows yet. So, yeah, it's just over 250, which is fucking bonkers. And the fact they actually had a working prototype for people to have a ride in, that is, that is just insane because normally all these cars, like... They get released at Geneva or Detroit Auto Show. They're all sort of like on a stand and everything and blooming, I know what you call it, just for show. But Elon Musk was like, you know what, fuck it, let's just bring a prototype, let people experience it. And I've got to give it to him. Now, bear in mind, it's not a massive show or anything like that. It's only, it's at Tesla's, I think it was at Tesla's plant. I'm pretty sure it was. Or I think it was maybe at an airport. Just let us know in the comment section below, guys. But yeah, the car looks great in my opinion now. The rear end kind of looks a little bit like a Porsche Cayman mixed with an Aston Martin 177. And the rest of the car is kind of a little bit like a Lycan Hypersport Porsche 918 sort of vibe. It's really, really cool looking. But the one thing I couldn't believe, and the one thing I'm sure a lot of people were wondering, is how much it's going to cost. Now when you hear all them performance numbers and like the fact that it's basically a hypercar, you would think, oh yeah, it's definitely going to be like, maybe 500,000, maybe even a million. It is 200,000. Think about that. Yeah, I know for us, like, us common folk, let's just say that, that is pretty far out of reach, but when you think about it in hypercar terms, when was the last time or ever have you ever heard of a hypercar costing $200,000? That is, and I, I mean, that is dollars, right? I mean, here in the UK, that's going to be even less. I mean, what? Fucking what? <laughs> it's just blowing my mind right now, man. The fact that they can get away with this is freaking insane. It's just brilliant for us and obviously brilliant for Tesla as well. I know they're more of a hardware company and they're kind of using the cars as showcases of what they can do, kind of similar to Remac in a way. Um, it's just it's just so cool, man, on either end. It's really cool. It just lets Tesla express what they're doing and just lets us get a hypercar and a Bugatti Chiron beating hypercar for 200 grand. And that brings me around to this car and its real-life counterpart, the Remac Concept 1. How is this and Remac going to stand up to Tesla? I mean, it's going to be a hell of a battle because obviously right now we've got a battle of like the horsepowers and stuff like the Dodge Demon and all the hypercars and everything. Are we going to have an electric battle? I mean, <laughs> that would be, that'd be freaking bonkers to see and that's why I wanted to talk about the Tesla and the Remac in this and just the perfect time to do this video. It's, I don't know man, let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comment section below because I kind of agree with Salamander on this one. In the next couple of years, I think everything's going to be fully electric. And to be honest, it's going to get cheaper in terms of the batteries. I believe Panasonic are the ones that are going to be powering the Tesla. So yeah, everything's going to be cheaper. Everything's going to be a lot lighter in terms of the batteries. So that is not only going to improve like the performance, but it's also going to improve like prices, which is freaking brilliant. So I know what a lot of people might be thinking, or oh, what's going to happen to like big V8s, big V12s and stuff. As you can see, they are slowly dying out. But for me and other petrol heads out there, we want them around as long as possible because electric cars. I mean, I've got nothing against them, right? I really do have nothing against them. I mean, if they are going to come out and have this sort of performance, then blooming soldier on. But I want V8s, I want V10s and everything to stick around. I mean, if they can find a way to make them more economical, I would love that. A good example of this can be the new Porsche 911s. They're all going turbos. I mean, it's not just the turbo which is going to have turbos, like... The normal Carreras, they're going to have turbos in them and stuff like that. Even the, the Porsche Cayman, that's downsized the engine now to an inline four, I believe, or like a, a four-cylinder, I think it is. So, yeah, and we all know how kind of disappointing it was compared to the old Cayman with the six-cylinder engine. It's freaking... 
I don't know, it sounds like a Subaru, man. It does sound like a boxer engine. But, all the negativity aside, this brings me back to this car, the Coil Cyclone. Now, even though it's not a real car, it's in GTA, it is representative of the Remac, and I really want things, if they are going to turn electric, to go the Remac and Tesla way. And right now, that is basically what it's looking like, because Remac, if you don't know, actually have some things for the Aston Martin Valkyrie. I believe they're working on some batteries and some sort of stuff for that car, and they will be spreading out into other different manufacturers. So that is the reason why this car and its real life counterpart are so great, along with the new Teslas. They're shaping the future. They are shaping the freaking future, man. This is what we are all going to have one day. Not like freaking hypercars or some shit. I mean, they will be around, but in electric form. But they're going to trickle down their technologies onto smaller cars, like freaking super minis, Enten, just like hatchback crossovers. We're all going to have that sort of shit. And with Elon Musk and Tesla setting up fast charging points around the states and maybe even the world soon, you never know if like it properly, properly takes off. And if that is the case, then I do stand by my point. The Remac is setting up the future alongside Tesla. So here's a good comparison right here. Look at what we thought was the future in like the early 2000s. And now look at this. Yeah, <laughs> certainly we prefer this thing for the future, not the freaking Prius. So I'll probably end up calling this video something like why the coil cyclone slash Remac will change the future or like shape the future because that is what this video is kind of turned into. It was originally meant to be like a review of the car but I went on a tangent of the freaking future but hopefully you guys liked that. Something a little bit different I think, more of a heavy discussion video. But yeah, overall I really really like the Coil Cyclone in terms of GTA. It's very very good and for the price wise, kind of like 1.9 million, it's a wee bit expensive but there is a rumoured I'm Not A Hipster DLC Part 2 coming soon. Hopefully that drops in December with some cheap cars like a, a proper classic Beetle, a Mark IV Supra, etc, etc. I'd be very, very hyped to see that happen. But for now, this is a very exciting car and I would recommend you guys actually going ahead and buying it because it's one of the best cars to come into GTA. I'd probably say since that Jag, which is sitting there, very, very nice car indeed. So let me know in the comments what you make of the whole Tesla slash Remax situation. Would you like to see them work together? I would love to see that, but personally, I don't think it would ever happen considering they are proper rivals at this point. So for you guys over in America, I hope you all had a fantastic Thanksgiving. But for now, thank you very much for watching. I will see you next Sunday with a brand new video. Have a fantastic week, guys. And bye-bye.